So these are some of the supplies to have on hand if you're considering diving into the nano coating process. We'll take you through the way we do it and all of the different steps involved. There's some great videos on our playlist on the subject. The lab is a really neat um, construction. So <clears throat> you can see the copper foil all the way up through here and the copper elemental <laughs> that a friend of mine doing some channeling for me um, said came in and bugged her and kept kept um, telling her to draw this picture before my session. She didn't know why, so she just did. <laughs> and this is where we're putting together the GANs making kits. There's a crock pot with the nano coating coils. Up there I've got um, used nano coat and zinc plates and um, electrical connecting wires. That's a little different finesse for it. Uh, it's nice to have a sink with hot running water here. Uh, all the supplies, copper, zinc, nano coated copper, iron. It's, it's a CH3 section. Oh yeah, that corner had to keep the zinc oxide gans in that core area here is where we assemble the tiny tubes and I've got um, the various forms of the co2 that we've made the bucket in the back has the tiny tubes themselves these are the various forms of the gold plasma that I've made I like to get a special glass containers for them because it's just parody. I love that pinky purpley feel of it. And then these are plasmas that I have made before. Again, there's the, the copper lining. Now what you can't see is behind the walls and behind the ceiling is also this copper over the um, the layers of the insulation. Some other plasmas that I have made. I won't show you all our stuff and storage on the shelves, but <laughs> up in there um, above the ceiling panel, that's all lined with copper as well. So this is a nice little Faraday cage in here. Nice coherent energies full of plasma. <clears throat> So the lye that we use, just make sure it is 100% lye because there's different um, household cleaners that are sold that are partially lye and partially other things. So this is the least expensive way to get it. We can also buy it in bigger containers. Make sure that you have mask, gloves, goggles. Um, I put my container that I'm going to do the caustic bath in in a box with some insulation. That's just a gardening knee pad down there. Um, and some fluff from packing and so we have that ready to go ahead and cover really quickly when it's time to do that and keep the steam in so I've got this chicken wire down here that we're going to hang the coils from because they need to be really close to the hot caustic that's going to be at the bottom um, but not in it <clears throat> right and not touching each other so there's a piece of chicken wire along the bottom to keep anything that falls down from going actually in there and then a piece of chicken wire to hang the coils on and then when it's all said and done we'll be able to cover that up quickly okay so we're taking the copper coils that we created and hanging them in this container and this will be where we do the nano coating at least step one and the bottom is the chicken mesh, and it's just a plastic container. So we're getting ready to do the nano coating. I'm trying to figure out how to hold that camera, sorry. <laughs> so we're putting on our mask and our gloves, and Linda sprinkled the sodium hydroxide into yeah, the container, and just 
finished up with that, so we'll just kind of show, yeah, that's, that's enough. It just needs to come up to maybe the bottom of the um, chicken mesh, just covering the bottom of the container. Okay, so I have this boiling in the lab. We're going to just keep our eyes and noses back, right? We need to kind of cover all of the eggs there. Okay, ready? Calling it good, huh? All right, just let it do its magic for a little bit. Yep. Okay, have them all put in there, and you can see they're just kind of hanging in there. Go to the side, and see everybody's just kind of suspended on the chicken wire. Okay, we got our gear on. We're looking good. Yeah, we're looking good. <laughs> we're looking real good. Oh, I see. you're so pretty. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, the sodium hydroxide is just going to pour in enough to cover the bottom of the container. Just enough to cover it. We already hung the coiled copper wires in here. So they did pretty good after the second caustic firing. We tried to put them on the back of the golf cart and chase the sun, <clears throat> which worked okay for one day, but since then there really hasn't been some sun. So I'm going to transfer them to crock pot that I've rigged up and one thing of note let me see if I can find one yeah if they sit for too long where their other end is way down in the caustic fluid I guess the caustic fluid kind of works off some of that nano coating see how that's a lighter color at the bottom so that part will have to get nano coated some more which is fine because I have this method here where I just transfer them to <laughs> a Goodwill crock pot. Let's see, what was he? <clears throat> $12.99. I've got my money's worth out of this poor old feller. And I'll just hang them in there and let that steam. And I usually attach it to a timer. That way it kind of it goes on and off, on and off, and it doesn't wear out the crock pot. So I've poured a little bit of the caustic down there, not enough to touch their little tips. Just, you know, maybe half an inch of it, I suppose. And then we put the caustic in a spray bottle. Give them a nice thorough mist on there. And then put this lid on with a timer to come off, on and off every 30 minutes. Got it on high. I'll let it go on and off every 30 minutes while I'm out here doing other things. So this is my strategy for discharging them. I'm going to go ahead and just very much wet the soil, which is kind of dry right now. So I'm just going to wet the soil, go ahead and give them a little bit of a rinse. And then each of them needs to be discharged. Um, fortunately, they're all hooked up to that piece of chicken wire. And so I can do that one at a time, or I can do a group discharge which um, actually just having them 
their wet selves attached to the ground does that great. Or we can also use the wire to provide that discharging. But we'll check on before and after. So the idea is that the charge would be trickled down, down, down off of them. And it's doing that nice and slowly. Um, but here in the light of day, I'm seeing some areas on them that still have a little bit of a coppery glow sensation. I don't know if you can see that in the lighting through the camera. So this is after two hot caustic baths and <clears throat> crock pot on high, on and off every half hour for several hours. So I'm doing a rinse and a discharge we need to do anyways. And let's see if the lighting will pick that up. That there are some of them that you can still see a little shimmer of the coppery-ish color here and there. So it'll probably require another hot caustic bath. So the nano coating does seem to be getting darker and more complete. It takes a fair amount of babysitting and working with a few times a day for a few weeks. They're looking darker and darker. I'm gonna let them steam out here again today. Um, in the evening, I actually plug them in um, to the crock pot, but um, on a nice hot sunny day sitting out here on this tarp, in this beautiful sunlight love the sun thank you sun seems to be sufficient to keep a good hot steam going on and then later i'll go ahead and do the um, rinsing it off discharging it again and then inspect them and see if they're ready to go or if we still have some work left to do Okay, so I'm doing the discharging process of the coils in between just about every single step of the caustic process and the nano coating process. We discharge what's called discharging the coils. So they do build up quite a charge um, on them. And then you would bring it down to neutral before going to the next step. Now, know that I am absolutely no electrical expert. I don't even pretend to understand electricity. This part is um, just one of the steps in the nano coating process, and it helps to lay down the nano coating and um, keep it spaced apart um, more evenly, from what I understand and it facilitates putting on a nice, deep, shiny nano coating um, layer, which would be like the, the next layer, the next layer, the next layer. So by the end of the process, um, apparently there's like 40,000 layers of the nano coating on the, on the coil. And of course the beautiful sunshine is a great place to put these coils to continue their nano coating and absorbing all the beautiful rays of the sun. Okay, so we updated, freshened up their nano coating several times in the sun out here in a bag with the spray caustic and I just rinsed them super well with water, a little bit of vinegar just to neutralize any caustic from them and I've set them back out here in the sunshine and we're doing the process of discharging the coils which removes the charge from them that the nano coating itself does sustain quite a electric charge now i am no electrician and i don't even pretend to understand <laughs> it hasn't ex hadn't given me all the information about how to thoroughly appreciate the intricacies is that a word of electricity and how it works yet someday i hope to download that and really get it but for the moment i know that after the 
well, just about every stage of the nano coating, we go through and, and discharge each of the coils. Helps to align the um, nanoparticles on kind of the graphene particles on each of them um, to bring them back down to neutral before you go through the next whatever the next phase of your nano coating is and certainly prior to using them sometimes it comes down pretty quick and sometimes it comes down pretty slow so we'll go through each of these and get those done and then I think we're ready to put them in some packages and send them off to you folks for the next step of our fun together creating the GANs so I've got it soaking in distilled water now you don't want to leave these in there very long I'm just gonna rinse it dump it out rinse it again maybe one more time um, you don't want them just to soak overnight in the water or anything just a quick rinse Okay, I think these have gotten sufficiently nano-coated. They look amazing. They, um, again, you always want to use gloves while you're handling it. And don't really touch the coil much. Just mostly touch the part that's going to be hanging on the cup. So you don't want to crush the little nano layers. And when you turn it around, look at it in the light, you shouldn't see any copper anymore. You shouldn't see any colors other than basically shiny black. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse these in... Um, distilled water and discharge each and every one of them and that one's on its way here we're working on the kits for our how to make gans beginner class <laughs> I think we have about 15 sets we're going to try to make this is the zinc um, plating it's sold for um, putting on rooftops but it's 99.99 percent pure zinc and I don't know, about 25 bucks for an entire roll. And these are the nano-coated coils. Don't touch them with your bare hand. You're supposed to handle them with gloves very carefully. And this is what we're looking at so far with the kits. You get a nano-coated coil, some vials to make your own hug, some vials to do whatever else you want with. You can store them or, you know, put those in or around water. There'll be a little wire for connecting the two plates, a spoon for collecting amino acids, two of the zinc pieces. You can see that's two separate pieces. I figure um, one nano-coated coil is usually good for more than one batch of GANs, so um, hopefully people will be able to make either two batches using these two, or um, there's a couple of other ideas that, that we'll give them on that, how to make even some of the different types of GANs, depending on how well this nano-coated coil preserves. And then something I was throwing around was having more things for people to make their own um, DIY stuff. So I'm going to put a fruit and veggie vial in there that they can put in their spray bottle and a little container that they can make their own little necklace. And then a, a stretchy fabric headband. You can either... Um, use this to put around a gallon jug of water it's about the right size or if you're good with a sewing machine or or um, just a needle and thread you can cut it in half and make two hugs so we'll do that when we do our um, diy class the last last one and i'll just give a, a quick little shot these are some um, gans that i made fairly recently and haven't harvested yet so i need to do that or I may hold off and do that during the class, show people how to harvest them. The one we'll be making in class is this one. So for the zinc pieces, we use this. Um, it's sold as a uh, moss retardant for, for roofs. You put this uh, above the roof at the, um, at the apex of the roof, apparently, and when the rain um, falls on it, it oxidizes and inhibits the, um, the growth of the moss. Um, and it, it's 
fairly thin and pliable. You can actually cut it with scissors, which I have. I don't totally recommend that. Um, your spouse will let you know pretty quick that your scissors are not as sharp as they used to be. But as you can tell, you know, in a in a pinch, you can definitely do it with that. My preference would be to use tin snips if you have those. And we're going to cut just a little edging of it here so that we have a piece that we can hang it from the side of the cup. And definitely use gloves with it. This um, is a little bit sharp. You can... Um, you can cut yourself or poke yourself if you do it. And then you can use it as a plate if you're using like a bigger um, cup or container to make your gans. Or you can, I usually roll it up if I'm going to use the use it opposite of the coil because I like them to be a similar size and shape. And then that little piece that we, we cut, we're just going to fold that up and make it into a little hook to hang on the side of the, the cup. There we go. Da da. So you can use just about any sort of copper wire to connect your um, your nano coated coil to your zinc plate for the Gans making project. This is the one that I just took out, so it's kind of spent. The nano coating is kind of finished up its its lifetime on that um, set that's been in there percolating and making some great gans for about i guess four or five days with the um, quicker method of just connecting the two so for that setup i mean i was using this 20 gauge wire oh this is 18 gauge excuse me um you can use just about any wire to connect your two plates this is just scrapped wire um, another great place to get it, and very easy to use, is stranded wire. So um, you can actually get just, I got this scrap wire at the um, secondhand store. All right, it's just a really good bunch of copper wire in there. The trick is getting it out, right? So um, take a lot of care and patience in handling your wire. Let's see if I've got this pointed enough to where we can actually see what I'm doing. Here we go. <clears throat> so, I mean, at a very basic level, you can just take a, a box knife and trying to get it where the camera will actually show it. And then just gradually cut off that piece of plastic. Make sure you're not cutting toward yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And that you know, pulls enough of that off of there where you can keep pulling your stranded wire out. So, I usually get about, I don't know, about a, a 10 inch piece of that. And this one stranded wire has got, I don't know how many in it, a lot. So you can separate out, I usually do about three. One, two, three. Three is a good catalyst number. And it seems like it's enough. I will pull those three out of this business here and you can just <clears throat> this is enough for for both sides of this you can have one to you can cut this in half see and then you would just have a piece to connect here and here and it's and then twist it together on the top okay if you're going to use it with an LED light it's handy to have a way to twist it on there so <clears throat> I'll just take a <clears throat> this little small I think that's just a twisty tie <clears throat> that just happens to be round right and I'm just gonna go windy 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 till I get a few little rounds on this side a few little rounds on this side <clears throat> There we go. And then I'm just going to pull that off of there. See how it's wound around? I'm just going to pull that off of there. And snip that in half. I'll get about half on each side of it. 
and then just kind of straighten that out a little bit. I think the light is over here enough. Let's see. Maybe that helps. There we go. Straighten this old puppy out a little bit. And then we can use these two ends to put our LED leads in. Make sure that the light is showing what I'm doing. There we go. I'll put the other one in the other side so they can aim there. There we go. And I'll usually kind of, you know, straddle these two so that they're away from each other. And then you can, with this stranded wire, you can just pinch it with your fingers. Oh, yeah, that's, that's enough usually. Or you can take a pair of pliers and give it a little squish just to kind of hold it in place. There we go. Give those two each a little squish. So sometimes it's it's easier to go ahead and hook these up to your zinc plate and your um, nano coated coil first, and then slide this little guy in here because handling it back and forth <laughs> it, it might slide out, but no big deal. You just put it right back in, right? Nice. And you can see with the LED lights, there's usually a shorter pole and a longer pole. Let me get one that I have. Straddled it because it's you've got to be mindful of which you're doing positive or negative. So with all the LED lights, there's a shorter leg and a longer leg. The shorter leg is the one on the side with what I call the flag, and it's a black flag. I just call it the black flag just to help me remind it myself that that's the um, the negative pole that you're going to attach to the nano coated coil. So. This is the shorter foot leg. Yeah, a little bit shorter. Some of them are more accentuated than others. This one just barely, you can tell. So the shorter one is the, the one that you're gonna attach to the negative pole in the nano material. And then the longer leg is the one you're gonna attach to the zinc plate. That is if you're making the variety that's more CO2 than Xeno. So we're assembling the Dan's making kits. Got all the parts put together, except for the nano-coated coil, because we like to wait till last. That's something that you want to handle very little, if at all. Make sure you leave it in your package until you're ready to actually use it. So we use gloves when we're handling it um, and move it around minimally. So we put it in last so we weren't handling them near as much. So there are other ways to do nano coating, you know, just anything that is um, hot, basically mixed with copper is going to create some sort of a nano coating. The thing is how um, mm, solid and permanent is it, right? So the method we've showed you here is the one that we find the most effective to make GANs to keep the nano coating covering on the material and out of the um, GANS making container and for sometimes even multiple batches of it. See the, um, the video we did on the creation of GANS during emergency situations in a hurricane and um, the Kesh Foundation also has some videos with Kesh using a um, blowtorch basically to nano coat the copper which we have tried um, the thing is it tends to be brittle and it doesn't stay on during the GANS making process there's plenty of videos online as well as other courses you can take but this is the set that we've chosen to make to share with people as a beginning um, class in how to make the the basic first kind of GANS the CO2 slash ZNO. We've also made other kits in the past where you can make three different kinds of GANs um, or even four. And we may put some more of those out again in the future as we have time to put them together.